Well, hold on. I gotta boot it up. Oh, let me record it. Remember, it's trichromatic number theory. Yeah, trichromatic number theory. That's right. And in just intonation, every interval is represented by numbers, right? Mm-hmm. So, <coughs> if if you build an instrument based on just intonation, you think, "Well, I've got to remember all those numbers. How am I ever going to do that?" You know, if I want to play <coughs> 20 pitches, 19, even more than 12, right? Even if I want to play 12, yeah. I got to know what the numbers are to play it. Right. Now forget that, because trichromatic number theory says every number breaks down into primary colors. And uh, the system works like this. Red is 1, and every multiple of 2 times 1. So you've got 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, all the way up. That's all red. Okay. <coughs> Yellow is 5. And blue is three. It's simple. So that's all you gotta know. That's all you gotta know. And the the way it works is, look, you can see it happen on the screen too. When I press yellow here, the pitch is five four. Okay. When I press blue, the pitch is three over two. <coughs> that's on this side. Now on this side, this is the inversion of the same thing. So when I press yellow, it's eight over five. When I press blue, it's four over three. Now what about the other colors? Well, <coughs> the way it works is th these three primaries mix to form the rest of the colors. Or you can say every other color is just made up of the primaries. And uh, if you think of any odd number, take any odd number, you can divide it into mm -hmm. the sum of two numbers in an arithmetic sequence or an accounting series, so like seven. 7 would be divided up as 3 plus 4. And yeah. 3 is blue. And 4 is 2 times 2 times 1 is red. So it's blue and red. So 7 is mixing blue and red together. You get... Oh, what? Blue and red? Yeah. Um, what would you get? Probably get... Um, Purple? Yeah. So, hit that one. That's seven. Purple. Oh, okay. So See? it's just like, just like, uh, yeah. Just and like it makes the colors. Sense too. Just like the, the colors. <coughs> okay, so, okay. That's it what makes you're sense about. because, um, if you think of one is the fundamental and two is the octave, all right? Uh -huh. if, if the fifth is blue, then between the fifth and the octave above is purple, right? Right. And that would be like a B flat. If you've got a C here, a G here, another C, the seven, flat seven is B flat. Oh, okay. yeah. And it's purple. That's seven four, so it sounds like. Oops. I'm going like, wait. Okay. Um, it's, it's, um, it's controlled by this pedal. So to actually play it, I can't really play it standing up, see? Oh. I can, but I'd have to What does the pedal do? The pedal. It's, I don't have enough room in here. The pedal, okay, you think about it, if you've got, <coughs> this is a wind controller, right? When yeah. you've got a wind instrument, you are, uh, <coughs> I don't play a wind instrument, actually. But you can produce the pitches in any octave you want, and using different fingerings. And right. The, Breath pressure and everything. Oh, else. so that changes the act. So, well, what this does is, see, it's moving this thing right here on the screen. So, you, you, if you got it in the center, it takes ev every one of the pitches that you play and centers it around whatever pitch is currently the one one. And just intonation, you always have one pitch that's one, and every other pitch is relative to that. So, so it's it's a relative system. So what oh, this okay, does yeah. is, say if I wanted to play 7 from 1, when I have the pedal um, push downwards with my, my heel, mm -hmm. then the pitch will go down instead of up. If I wanted to leap up beyond the 5th, then I would play it like this. 
so it looped up the seventh. Oh, okay. So I can leap up the seventh or go down the second. That's what this. Controls. That's what that does. Because there's no other way to do it on here. Yeah, you, you would have to have another uh, button to push. Uh -huh. So it's, it's. I mean, it takes some getting used to in order to play. If it's just sitting in the middle, then I can play around. I've got voluntary pitch bending here. Oh. That little piece of equipment costs a hundred dollars, though. So. Whoa. Yeah. Well, where'd you buy all this stuff? Those are three different minor thirds there. So here's a 6-5. Here's 1916. Yeah. And here's 7-6. Uh-huh. Now, oh, where did I buy it? I uh, actually I bought everything over the internet. Yeah. Except for this box, which I bought at Radio Shack. And <coughs> these two speakers, which are from Radio Shack. And this gooseneck. That's the name Goose mm -hmm. from Radio Shack. And all together, um, the MIDI board in there costs 100 bucks. And I wired up the switches. These cost like 25 cents a piece. Which you can imagine for that keyboard out there is quite a quite a lot of, of money. But yeah, the uh, the actual brain of the instrument is in the computer. And that's so you had to write the software then to go with it. Right. And I used Max. You ever used Max? What's Max? M A X is the name of the programming. No, language. no. Oh no, I. Max, oh, you got to teach me Max about Matthews that is the programming. Guy. Um, you know, computer music guy. Oh, okay. That this is named after. Oh, oh so it's a language specifically for, for music, music yeah. programs. Yeah. And programming. You can do MIDI and real-time synthesis and digital audio with it, but I didn't get the digital audio option. I bought this thing on eBay for a few hundred bucks. <coughs> it's just an old power Mac. Yeah, thirty-four hundred. What is that? Like, uh, what what system is on there? Eight, eight? Um, no, I don't know. But I think it's uh, actually got a more recent system than I use over Oh, really? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it took me a long time to figure out how to use Max, but I just downloaded the manuals and you know, I read yeah. this, this much stuff on it. So, so that's it. Um, there also is a program on here. That these these buttons here are programmable function mm -hmm. buttons. And I wrote a little program that allows you to uh, use those to play chords. Chords. Let's see. You want to play it? Um. Yeah. <coughs> yes, I do. <laughs> you can play it. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but it's really a lot. I don't show this to anybody. Okay, I'll show it this. To this is highly classified. Oh yeah, I don't want to. I'm not going to let your secrets out. Right? Okay. Eighteen. Does this have the date on it though? Because this would actually be very good. Yeah, it does have the date on it. Okay. It, it automatically yeah times times. That would be nice because uh, I don't know. I haven't shown this shown this to anyone, but um, it would be nice to have some proof that. I have it here. Well, I can give you a copy of it time, if you want. Uh, on videotape, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here it is. Um, you gotta look right okay. here. Okay, these are the buttons on the goose. <coughs> and as you can see, they're colored. Now, they're arranged in groups of 12. This side is numerators on the top and denominators on the bottom. These are inversions of each other, in other words. Now, you can see that this side is the inversion of this side. The symmetry is going this way. And it's exactly opposite. So these are denominators and these are numerators. Now, as I was just showing John, and as I'm showing you now, <coughs> you can uh, simply play any of these keys and change the denominator, keeping the change the numerator, keeping the denominator some power of two, and you can get. And of 
course, this is it's following wherever I play as long as the interval is is smaller than a fifth. <coughs> and in addition to that, that's just playing one key. I can I can play two adjacent keys at the same time. Yellow is five. Blue is three. It's also six. And five plus six is eleven. So green is eleven. I can play that. Here's five, three, and then eleven. <laughs> That's harmonic between those. Now, yellow is 5, is also 10, and green is 11, so if you put those together, you get 21. 10 plus 11. So that's, this is 10, 11, 21. That's harmonic between those two. In addition to that, <coughs> you can pr press two buttons at once. So I've got 21, and this is 5, 10, 20. Put those together, and you've got 41. You can get a little more flavor of it. I play uh, 40 and then 41. 40 is 5, the same, same as 5. All right, so the options there allow me to play things uh, on both sides. Remember, this is numerators and denominators, so these are inversions of each other. either side I can also if I want to change the denominator I can do that so I've got yellow again I'll choose that as 5 4 well if I get bored with that though I can choose a different denominator so for instance I can have 10 9 orange is 9 because red is 1 2 4 4 plus 5 yellow is 5 is 9 so that's the mean between those two that's 5 4 and 5, 4 to 10, 9. The difference between 10, 9 and 9, 8. It's pretty obvious there. Yeah. Okay, so you've got this possibility <coughs> of playing ratios, numerators and not denominators over here. So that's what some of these sound like. I was saying, here's the kicker. Yeah. Okay, you've got numerators and denominators here. Well, you've got the inversion over here. And this is how you get the real power of the goose, okay, happening. Oh. Is that <coughs> I combine intervals here with intervals here, and they multiply it together. So if I'm playing five here, and I want to play, uh, I want to transpose that up, I mul multiply it by five. I play that here. Sounds like an augmented triad, but that's, those are pure thirds. Now, <coughs> that that wouldn't be so uh, so amazing if, for the fact that, if it weren't for the fact that I can combine ratios with both a numerator and a denominator on both sides. So that's 20 over 11 there, and I'll play. Uh, that's 11 over 9 there. All right, I don't want to cancel out, so I'll choose something else. All right, that's 4, 3, and then 7, 4. Put together, that's 7 over 6. I've got 5, 4, and then 16, 11. Put together, that's 20 over 11. If I want to put all those together, I 